Till now, we have always been talking about free oscillations of a system. Today, we'll start looking at forced oscillations. Okay, and I'm going to be interested in one-dimensional system. One-dimensional system. Okay, we'll talk about a um, system with more than one dimension later. Okay, uh, that's one thing. And then I will be interested in um, looking at this one dimensional system and um, we'll assume that there is a force which is acting on this system uh, externally and that external force is a sinusoidal force. Okay, because that is what most generally you will be interested in because if you have your system on which um, a periodic force is acting then <coughs> um, you can decompose it into sinusoidal forces, sinusoidal components and that's why we are interested in um, looking at forces which are sinusoidal. So let's look at the um, equation of motion for such a system. So I will have um, the Euler Lagrange equation will be d over dt del L over del q dot minus del L over del q equals here you will have your generalized forces. Remember our first few lectures where um, we talked about, talked about generalized forces. So that I put in here and the Lagrangian of my system will be described by half q dot square minus half omega square q square okay so which is uh, which means that the omega is the natural frequency of the system and I have chosen the coordinates as that the coefficient here is just half everything absorbed everything else has been absorbed into q let me write down here f or not there maybe F is the generalized force. Okay, now if F is equal to zero, it vanishes, then you have a free system. Okay, and the solution to uh, the free case, you already know, um, is this. Q is A, let me see whether I am using A, yes, A cos omega t plus alpha, okay, and your equation of motion in this case is Q double dot plus omega square Q is equal to 0, and remember this is a homogeneous equation. Okay. Now I want to assume um, sinusoidal force as I said. So I will take the generalized force F to be some constant F, small f, and then you have cos gamma t plus beta. So the frequency I take to be gamma, okay, of this um, external agency. And now our equation of motion is Q double dot plus omega square Q equal to F cos gamma T plus beta. Okay, note I have taken different alpha and beta here. So, I mean, you can choose one of them to be zero. So, let's say you can choose alpha to be zero, which is basically equivalent to choosing what is the origin of time. I mean, you can absorb that alpha in, in the definition of time, right? You can choose your new time such that there is no alpha here. So that's what I meant. So you can uh, redefine your origin of time and uh, this alpha will go away. But then um, here I keep it general so that you have uh, some phase here. 
okay corresponding to the free case anyhow so um, that's what it is and this equation is not homogeneous okay this is a non homogeneous equation and the most general solution is to this non homogeneous equation q of t would be the homogeneous part which is a cos omega t plus alpha okay plus a particular solution let's i should find out a particular solution to this non homogeneous equation and then i'll find the uh, then i'll get the full solution okay so that's what we have to do okay um now you can let me draw a vertical line here okay so let me search for a solution a particular solution of this form so i say q prime will be some b um cos gamma t plus beta so that's what i look for and that i sh should do because that's what you have on the right hand side okay and if i substitute this in the equation of motion here in this one i immediately get b equal to f 1 over omega square minus gamma square okay so the most general solution i have is the following i should add to the particular solution the the solution corresponding to the homogeneous part okay and this is what it is plus the particular solution and of course i have forgotten no nothing it's fine so your various b is this and then you have cos gamma t plus beta so and where omega is not equal to gamma because at omega equal to gamma this this solution blows up okay so now imagine uh, this is this part is called a transient solution because if imagine there were um there was friction present there, okay let's say the pendulum is experiencing some friction which will be the case in in reality and then let's say also imagine that there is no no external force acting on it and you have a free pendulum you i mean a pendulum which is experiencing some friction after a while it will stop right meaning this solution will just go away after some time if there was friction present and that's why this is called transient okay so that is the solution for forced oscillations without any friction let me write here tran okay but this is um not valid when your gamma the the frequency of external agency is same as the natural frequency of the system it looks like this solution blows up okay so it is not valid here so we'll next look at the um, the problem near a uh, near resonance so when omega is same when gamma is same as omega we say we have resonance and that's what we want to look at now okay so let me write it down okay so now our equation of motion is 
the following. Skew double dot plus omega square q equals f cos omega t. Okay, I've just put the phase to zero. If you wish, you can bring it back, but I will just put it to zero. And this omega is same as this omega here. Okay, this one and this one are same. Okay, I can. What I can do is I can go to complex variables, and instead of using Q as instead of using the real Q, I use Z. So let me um, define a new equation. Z double dot plus omega square Z equals F e to the i omega t and if I take a real part of this equation okay I will get back this one okay where I will define q to be the real part of z okay now as before because this is a non-homogeneous equation I should search for a, a particular solution and of course I know what the solution to homogeneous part is so let's go ahead and search for a particular solution Let's try the solution of this form. So I say the particular solution I will denote by Z prime. Okay. So let's say the particular solution Z prime is some function of T which is A of T times e to the I omega T. Let me try this one out. Okay. Um, you can check that Z prime dot is I omega z prime plus a dot e to the i omega t and if you take a second derivative of this you are going to get a double dot plus 2 i omega a dot minus omega square a you should check this i hope i'm not making any mistakes e to the e e to the i omega t okay now you can substitute all the three here one uh, z prime z dot prime and z double dot prime put them in the equation of motion here and obtain the following uh, if you do so you get the following you get a to be minus i f over 2 omega times t plus k1 e to the minus 2 i omega t plus another constant k2 so k1 and k2 are complex constants okay that's good now if i have found my a i have my z prime which is the particular solution okay now what i'll do is i'll write down k1 as c1 e to the i alpha 1 and k2 as c2 e to the i alpha 2 where c1 c2 alpha 1 and alpha 2 they are all real numbers let me da write down alpha 1 alpha 2 c1 c2 they all belong to real numbers and you get the particular solution to be now z prime equals minus i f e to the i omega t over 2 omega and this entire thing is multiplied by t plus c1 e to the minus i omega t minus alpha 1 plus c2 e to the i omega t plus alpha 2 that's your particular solution so if I take real prime of z prime sorry real part of z prime then that is what will be the particular solution of this equation right now look at these two parts these two are I mean let's let's take the real part of z prime 
real part of z prime is f sin omega t over 2 omega t plus c1 cos omega t minus alpha 1 okay and c2 cos of omega t plus alpha 2 now you see these um, these two terms this one and this one these are just uh, cos omega t and something some phase and these are the solutions to the homogeneous homogeneous equation okay uh, the homogeneous equation associated with this non homogeneous equation so these two you can drop okay you can uh, put the constant c1 and c2 to 0 and you can do so because these two because this thing is anyway available in the homogeneous equation but if you don't want it doesn't matter you can keep them and when you add everything you can combine this this and the one with the homogeneous again to one function which will be cos omega t plus some phase times uh, some constant some constant amplitude okay so either way whichever way you prefer you you can draw you will have uh, only this piece and the homogeneous part so i'll put the constant c1 and c2 to zero so my particular solution is is f sin omega t over 2 omega times t okay and as i said i can write down the my solution q of t to be some constant a cos of omega t plus alpha okay plus the particular solution okay now you see i don't have any singularity at omega uh, i mean there's no no nothing singular going because omega is equal to gamma there's no no singularity here okay as we had in this case uh, if you see here okay that's good so this is the right way of doing it now if you look at the solution carefully and pay attention to this term you see it is of course there is a harmonic variation sin omega t here but you also have a t proportional proportionality here which means that your solution your displacements q of t they are growing linearly with time so this grows linearly with time right so at some point of time the displacements will be large because as time grows the displacements grow linearly okay and your approximation that you are close to the equilibrium will no longer hold true and all the other terms that we have dropped in linearizing the uh, equations of motion okay they would play a role and this solution will not be valid but if if you are uh, looking at only small values of t then this is fine then this is this is the solution okay so for large t the approximation of small oscillations breaks down okay uh, next we should look at damped oscillations okay and then we will have um, both damped as well as forced or everything present together and we'll look at the solution in that case and eventually we would like to see what we can say when we have not just a system of one degree of freedom but as we have been discussing before what happens if i have a system of more than one degrees of freedom can I do again um, 
what I was doing and bring in normal coordinates. Okay, so that will be the uh, our next task.